suspicious. The Milkman Conspiracy For Psychonauts fans, this level needs no introduction. The twisted mind of Boyd Cooper has been dissected by many over the last 16 years. And for good reason. The atmosphere of Boyd's inner world puts the player directly into his mental state. The twisted suburban streets are full of sights and characters that give the player a sense of paranoia. Up until now, the mental worlds have been formed in a manner to give us a clear logic for how the individual psyche works. This one invites us to throw logic out of the window, as the mind of Thorny Tower's guard is not a rational one. Due to the complexities of this mindscape, I will break this video up into four sections. The level itself, who is Boyd, who is the Milkman, and what lessons Raz could have learned in this world. So let's get to it. At the gates of the asylum, Raz finds Boyd guarding the entrance. He mutters nonsense and scribbles conspiracy theories on the wall. When asked to open the gate, he claims he does not have the keys. Inside his mind, this behavior is no different. Raz finds himself in a small house with no door, while Boyd muses on what happened to the mysterious milkman. In order to properly traverse the level and better understand him, Raz must master the clairvoyance ability. This skill allows him to go inside the mind of another and look at the world through their eyes. This is an incredibly useful talent when trying to understand another. How else can one truly get to know another if they do not put themselves in their shoes? However, it can also be disturbing when the mind is not entirely normal. As mentioned after Lungfishopolis, the minds from now on dive into the realm of abnormal psychology. This becomes apparent as soon as a door appears and Raz exits the house. He finds himself looking upon a suburban neighborhood. The streets, however, are twisted around, disobeying any laws of gravity. Lawn ornaments and trash cans snap photos as he walks by. Entering homes puts us in the perspective of a security camera, giving the feeling that Big Brother is watching. G-men fill the streets, pretending to be road workers or family men out trimming the hedges. Children with the appearance of Girl Scouts follow Raz around, whispering to hedges behind his back. Some figments depict sights from an everyday neighborhood, such as a father barbecuing or mowing the lawn, while children set up a lemonade stand or play jump rope. Others depict a dog with antennas sticking out of their backs, a bird with a camera on its head, or a boy riding his bicycle while spying on Boyd. Every step into this surreal landscape waters the seeds of paranoia. The landscape is expected considering the mind we find ourselves in belongs to a man who believes foreign toy makers are in collusion with the crows. One important detail about how the world is structured involves two locations. One is the island where the milkman is hidden. The other is a small area with the appearance of a playground where a mental vault is hidden. Both are separated from the main suburban road by a telephone wire. It is almost as though someone knew Boyd's paranoia would not allow him to use the landline telephones. These locations were designed to keep things hidden from his thoughts. Luckily, Raz traverses them just fine. Across one, he uncovers a home where the milkman has been hidden in a glass coffin. Guarded by the Rainbow Squirts and their den mother, they protect the milkman from those who are looking for him. Over the course of Raz's involvement, the milkman is released and goes on a pyrotechnic rampage inside Boyd's mind. Outside of the mindscape, the guard's personality flips. The milkman is now in control and prepares to burn the asylum down. Another major detail is that the sensors do not make an appearance for the majority of the level. To recap, sensors are representations of the mind's immune system. They travel around and stamp out hallucinations, manias, and other unnatural thoughts. Their absence allows Boyd's delusions to run wild. It is only after Raz discovers and releases the milkman that the sensors arrive and try to remove him. As it turns out, Coach Oleander created this alter ego to use for his own purposes. Based upon this climactic battle, we are able to distinguish between what figures are designed by Oleander and which come from Boyd himself. First, let us examine who Boyd Cooper was before the Milkman persona was created. The first memory vault is found just outside the graveyard gates. As it is out in the open, we know that Oleander did not care if this memory was found. 
the name of this vault is Boyd Fired Again. In it, we learn that he worked as a security guard at a department store before he was fired. Late one night, he returned with a carton full of Molotov cocktails made out of glass milk bottles. He set the building on fire, which led him to being committed to the Thorny Towers Asylum. Now, there were a couple of questions in this vault that were never answered in the game. Why was Boyd fired, and why did he end up being committed to an asylum rather than imprisoned for arson? While some of his dialogue has subtle hints, the answer to these questions cannot be answered by the game itself. Mom, are you sure these are your children? Additional backstory for many of the characters was accidentally leaked in the game files for the Psychonauts Steam release. While they have already been deleted, copies of the LiPo backstory document can be found online. While it is not confirmed how canon this information is, some of Boyd's dialogue and aspects of his mindscape link to it. The unanswered questions from the vault may be resolved here. For most of his younger years, Boyd was an only child and as such received all of his parents' attention. His father was a milkman who finished his route early and was home every afternoon to spend time with his son. His mother was a stay-at-home mom who volunteered with various organizations, one of which was a den mother for a local troop. At some point, she began cheating on her husband with another man. Her illicit affair eventually became a huge scandal in the suburban community that Boyd's family lived in. His parents divorced, and his mother moved in with the widower she had an affair with. Now Boyd was no longer a single child, as the man had 14 children of his own. Being the middle child between them, he became an unknown individual in his own house. Over time, he became introverted and created paranoid fantasies about his new siblings and how they were conspiring against him. This may have been his way to cope with feeling invisible. Boyd's paranoia and persecutory delusions began here. According to the DSM, one subtype of a delusional disorder is called the persecutory type. This is described as the person believing that he or she is being conspired against, spied on, followed, poisoned, or otherwise maligned against maliciously. According to some studies, one cause other than genetic and biological factors is linked to childhood trauma. One example is being placed in foster care, or in Boyd's case, becoming invisible amongst his 14 siblings to the point that he was neglected in every way. According to the LiPo document, his fantasies escalated until he felt himself to be the center of a web of conspiracies. A conspiracy that involved City Hall, the federal government, multinational corporations, and most of all, the dairy industry. This last one is likely linked to his biological father's profession. This type of delusional disorder can cause the individual to take small things and amplify them to be the center point of the delusion. This may be because irrational reasoning is a common behavior in those who suffer from persecutory delusions. They may jump to irrational conclusions based upon little to no evidence. For anyone who has spent enough time listening to Boyd in the house, this easily describes his behavior. The Rodeo Clown Cartel are telling my location to why does that hydrant keep looking at me? All of this is necessary to know why Boyd was fired and why he was institutionalized. After dropping out during his junior year of high school, he got a job as a security guard. The LiPo document states that, for a while at least, he was functioning fine in this setting. However, his paranoia eventually impeded his ability to work. He would detain and interrogate random customers frequently. Despite having no evidence, he would accuse them of working for some secret agency sent to spy on him. The store manager received complaints and threats of lawsuits against the business, which led him to fire Boyd. This experience was taken as confirmation that all of his theories were true. With perceived evidence of a secret plot against him, he returned to incinerate the building. But this isn't the end of it. Boyd distrusted the public defender and decided to represent himself in court. During the closing arguments, Boyd informed the judge, jury, and everyone inside the courtroom that they were all part of this conspiracy and had played a personal role in his persecution. As a result, he was found to be mentally unstable and was sentenced to serve his time in the Thorny Towers Asylum. As the building was located above a Citanium deposit, his specific schizoaffective disorder was only amplified to dangerous levels. 
After the facility lost its funding, Boyd hid from the asylum workers, who eventually left him there. Later, Coach Oleander discovered him scribbling on the walls and decided to make good use of him. Based upon this information, it becomes obvious that Oleander did not cause Boyd's mental instability. He had it long before the Milkman was created. Figures from his childhood make appearances in this mental world. The Den Mother is a stand-in for his own mother, and oddly enough, the Rainbow Squirts may be his 14 step-siblings. Upon entering the house at the end of the phone line, 13 girls are inside. If we include the one that jumped from the book repository with a box of exploding cookies, that makes 14. His childhood fantasies involved all of them being involved in a conspiracy, so having them being involved in the Milkman conspiracy makes sense. Inside of his mind, the aspect that is Boyd remains in the starting house. Now it is time to move past the guard and explore the genesis and relevance of the Milkman himself. It is no secret that this world dives into the idea of psychological conditioning. According to the mental vault entitled Boyd Hired Again, we see firsthand the conditioning that Boyd underwent. After Oleander found him, he used hypnosis and associations with milk and cookies to create an alter ego named the Milkman. This lay dormant in his mind, symbolized by this figure being asleep in the glass coffin. This coffin resided in a cobweb-covered basement beneath the house guarded by the Den Mother and her rainbow squirts. Without even needing to tell the player, the imagery alone explains what is going on. Basements are commonly used as symbols of the unconscious, climbing down the stairs into deeper parts of the mind. Mental cobwebs in Psychonauts are used to show areas of the mind that have not been used in a while. Oleander drew upon Boyd's past to create the Den Mother and the Rainbow Squirts. He designed them to protect this alternate personality from anyone who would come looking, including Boyd himself. As this personality is kept hidden, his sensors have nothing to fight against until Raz awakens him. Once he does, this alter ego of the Milkman takes control. Before moving on, it is necessary to discuss alter egos in further detail. This concept was first explored by Marcus Cicero, a philosopher of first century Rome. He described it as a second self or trusted friend. Centuries later, the idea was further developed by Franz Mesmer. He determined that these alternate selves emerged when a person was in a trance-like state. His surname is where the modern word mesmerize originates. Over time, these trances evolved into modern hypnotism. Inspired by Mesmer's work, the term alter ego was officiated a century later. By definition, alter egos are morally neutral. They can reflect either positive or negative aspects of our personality. An example of a positive alter ego is Superman vs. Clark Kent, while a negative one may be found in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When carefully controlled, alter egos can be very beneficial to the individual. On the flip side, they can allow one's negative traits to emerge forth with a voice of their own. Regardless of how they are used, the creation of alter egos follows a certain pattern. For the purposes of the Milkman persona, let's go through this creative process and at the same time review how Oleander did it. The first step involves creating a goal for your alter ego. Oleander required his creation to serve two purposes. The first was to guard the gates of the asylum. The second was to destroy any evidence about what he and Dr. Lobato were doing there. In our personal lives, these goals can be anything, some healthy, some less so. The next step is to define the alter ego's characteristics. This can include a personality, backstory, appearance, name, and other factors. Rather than create an ego from scratch, Oleander borrowed things from Boyd's past for inspiration. His position as a guard at the department store and his paranoid obsession with the dairy industry helped form the persona of the milkman. Boyd's past with arson perfectly aligned with Oleander's goal of having him destroy the tower if the conditions were right. This was done through use of psychological conditioning. There are two primary forms of conditioning. Classic conditioning, as put forth by Ivan Pavlov, and operant conditioning which were attributed to B.F. Skinner. Classic conditioning is a learning procedure which involves inducing a response to an unrelated neutral stimuli. 
We all have unconscious responses to certain things. The most famous example is named Pavlov's dog. Dogs naturally will salivate at the sight of food. The unconditioned stimulus in this example is the food. The unconditioned response is salivation. During an unrelated experiment, he noticed that dogs would begin to salivate at the sound of footsteps when a person came in to deliver the food. The dogs began to associate a seemingly unrelated neutral stimuli, these footsteps, with their food. As a result, it became what he referred to as a conditioned stimuli. At this point, he wanted to test another neutral stimuli and began to ring a bell before presenting the food. After doing this for a while, the dog began to salivate at the sound of the bell. In short, he conditioned the animal to behave in ways that were not natural to it. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, involves behavior modification based upon reinforcement and punishment. This is used in most modern educational systems and is broken down into four categories. The first two, called reinforcement, involves a stimuli intended to strengthen a behavior. Punishment involves stimuli designed to weaken a behavior. From here, it is broken down into two additional categories, positive and negative. Positive is adding a stimuli, while negative is removing it. Positive reinforcement is giving a reward for a behavior that the individual wants to encourage. One example is that if every student passes the test, they are rewarded with an extra recess period. Negative reinforcement is removing a negative stimuli. If every student does well that day, the teacher may cancel that night's homework. Positive punishment is adding a negative stimuli in response to poor behavior. This can be as simple as making the student stay late for detention in response to acting up. Negative punishment is removing a positive stimuli. Taking away someone's toy or canceling recess can be an example of this. These two forms of conditioning help to shape our behaviors as well as our mental and emotional associations. Normally, this happens naturally throughout our lives. If we touch a hot oven, we feel pain. This is positive punishment, teaching us not to touch the hot oven again. As a psychonaut, Oleander has experience navigating the minds of others. Because of this, he is able to abuse these techniques for the purpose of psychological control, as seen with Boyd Cooper. Using hypnosis along with other forms of classic conditioning, Boyd took advantage of a mental process already present and reassociated them to form the Milkman alter ego. Boyd's emotions about his step-siblings and mother were altered and repurposed. As a child, they made him feel invisible, like he was locked in the basement, kept from sight. Within the mindscape, they serve the same role. Instead of a conspiracy to make Boyd feel like nothing, they became a conspiracy to keep the milkman hidden. Using milk and cookies, Oleander is able to use them for the creation of this persona by associating them with his paranoid delusions. With all this in mind, let's get back to the story. Over the course of Raz's time within the world, he ends up releasing the milkman alter ego. Overcome by this persona, Boyd promptly walks to the front doors of the asylum, preparing to burn it to the ground. While his intention was to get Boyd to open the front gates, he accidentally triggered a psychotic episode in the man. For most of the game, there have been no lasting consequences for meddling in the minds of others. The one and only time before now that changes were made, it was for the better. In freeing Linda's mind from the neural implant, Raz was able to help her. This time around, Raz had a negative impact on Boyd. Whenever dealing with another person's mind, it is important to tread cautiously. Unstable minds are easy to manipulate. Oleander took advantage of this when he conditioned a new personality into the man. With no concern for Boyd's well-being, he mentally abused him for his own purposes. While Raz did not do so intentionally, he also harmed the mind of another. Through lack of experience, he activated a tripwire set by Oleander and triggered an unstable arsonist. Some are already walking a tightrope over the chasm of mental instability. The last thing we want is to make them lose balance and fall over. From here on forward, every mind that Raz encounters will be unstable. With one failure under his belt, he will need to learn from his mistake and tread more carefully. When entering another's mind, one must accept responsibility of what happens to that mind. 
If your involvement leads this person to having a better life, one should take joy in this achievement. However, if your involvement causes this individual to become a harm to themselves or others, responsibility is partially on your shoulders. Raz must keep this in mind now that he has access to the disturbed patients residing within Thorny Towers. The milkman has completed his route. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.